All right. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Dana Mantilla. I have my American flag background because today we're going to talk about protecting the United States. That's some great information that we all have here. But what we're really going to talk about is the CMMC certification. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. Let's see here. Oh, there we go. Voila. All right. So as I just mentioned, my name is Dana Mantilla. I am the founder of Identity Protection Planning. And what I do is help companies create a good cybersecurity culture and get some plans and policies and actions in place. And you can find me on LinkedIn. I do a lot of videos that I post there daily. Some of them are funny. Some of them are hopefully helpful. Just so you can check me out on uh, LinkedIn. I'm also a member of the Connecticut CMMC Coalition. All right, so what is this cybersecurity maturity model that we're hearing about here? And what does it mean for you? Okay, so the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisitions and Sustainment put together the CMMC. And it is based on the existing regulation, this DFARS clause. And the main point about that is that is requires contracts, tr contractors to implement this NIST SB 800171. But the most important difference here is that this is based on trust and self-assessment. So everybody's going in and saying, yes, we're doing this. Um, and we are definitely following our cybersecurity protocol and off their merry way they go. But so the Department of Defense is requiring this. They're also assuming that this is currently being done, right? So the basic assumption of the SB 800 is to protect CUI controlled unclassified information. And there's three fundamental assumptions that are going in right now, okay? They are assuming, let's just read it first, statutory and regulatory requirements for the protection of CUI are consistent, whether such information resides in federal systems or non-federal systems, including the environments in which those systems operate. Safeguards implemented protect the CUI are consistent in both federal and non-federal systems and organizations and the confidentiality impact for the value of CUI is no less than this FIPS 191. Okay, so three things that we have safeguards in place, that we're following them consistently, and that we're keeping our CUI confidential, right? Not too bad when you put it that way. So a few things that are, that are covered right now in the current program, the uh, NIST SB 800 171, Let's just talk about training. Is your organization training your employees? Do you have cybersecurity training in place? What exactly is involved in that? Encryption. Are you encrypting things that you should be encrypting, especially on mobile devices? That's a big thing. Remote access. Do you know who's logging into your computer system and when they're logging in, when they're logging out, and who they are? Can you track that? Are you working on a least privilege where people are only getting access to parts of the computer system that they actually need access to or parts, parts of the network that they need access to? Physical barriers, are things being protected, physically protected, filing cabinets, rooms that store servers, that kind of thing, is that happening? User identification, can you does everybody have their own unique login and can you tell when they're in the system, when they're not in the system? And here's a really important one that everybody needs, needs to have in place if they don't already, which is an incident response plan. Now that means if something was to happen or somebody suspected something might be happening, would they know what to do? Would they know who to contact? Would everybody know what they should be saying to the public? So some, something along those lines, do you have that in place? And CUI, is the CUI, whether it is a, an actual computer or whether it's a, a printed out piece of paper, is it marked correct, correctly? And then your subnetwork. Do you have a subnetwork within your organization for guests that are coming in and they need access to the internet? Anybody that doesn't, um, isn't supposed to have the access to your very private information, is there a, another way that they can hop onto uh, the internet with a separate network? If you'd like, you can read all these lovely details right here in this publication. Now, here's the bad news. There's one key difference with CMMC, and that means that they are going to send in an outsider to check on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. A third party verification system. So there's no longer that, yep, we're doing it, and they're just going to trust and take your word. They're sending in 
outside third party assessors. So authorized and accredited CMMC third party assessment organizations, they have a fun little acronym here, C3PAOs, you're gonna get very familiar with that term. So they're gonna come in and they're going to conduct and issue CMMC certifications to the defense industrial based companies at the appropriate CMMC level, because there are levels. This is the homepage where you can go and it's got great resources on here, lots of little links to um, all kinds of little tips and things. And just to understand what, what their goal is, is let's think of why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? They're doing this because like it says right here, the OUSD is committed to working with the, with the DIB sector to enhance the protection of FCI, federal contract information, and CUI, controlled unclassified information within the supply chain. So when really get down to the nitty gritty of why are we doing this? What is the reason behind this? This isn't just to be difficult or to put things in more red tape to cut through. This is to protect our information because we have a little bit of ways to go when it comes to making sure everything is nice and secure. Here's some more bad news. So whether you have a contract to cut the grass or you have a cleaning crew that cleans a, a DOD government office or you make bombs or supply a, a base with food, you're gonna need to be CMMC certified. Now don't stress, we're gonna be able to get through this because we're gonna break it down into easy digestible bits, okay? Over the next five-ish years, all government contractors that are dealing with the DOD are gonna be required to have some level of CMMC certification. Now they're taking the crawl, walk, run approach. They're not just throwing this out there and requiring everybody immediately to become certified. However, the sooner you get started with this, the easier it's gonna to be to achieve the CMMC certification. And instead of getting overwhelmed, oh my goodness, where are we gonna start? Let's just look at it like this. The best way to look at CMMC is to consider the requirements, good cybersecurity business practices, just good business practices, good rules that you should be following to help protect your information. That's all. It's a little easier to digest when we think about it that way, as opposed to, oh my goodness, what is the CMMC certification? So I mentioned before, there are five levels. Everyone is going to need to be CMMC level one. And that's a huge, obviously it's everyone, so that's a big, uh, big number, but it's also um, a, a big majority of the, the only thing that a lot of contractors are gonna have. So as you have more and more sensitive information, we're gonna get into that a little bit later, you're gonna have to achieve a higher level. But again, it's good cybersecurity hygiene practices and good cybersecurity culture within your organization. That's level one. So when you look at it like that, it doesn't sound like it's that bad. All right, oh my goodness, now that you're having a heart attack here, how do I know if my company is gonna to need to be CMMC certified? Well, the short answer is the way you'll find out is it'll be written into a bid that you're, that you're putting in. And it'll say, if you wanna put a bid in, you need to be CMMC certified and it will tell you which level of certification you need. Here are all of the domains that are involved with CMMC and within these domains are different practices. So based on the different levels, there's gonna be certain domains that are gonna be required. And within those domains, like I just mentioned, are gonna be certain practices that uh, are equal to level one. Then you get to level two, maybe they're gonna, well, level two is kind of an intermediary stage, but as you're moving up level three, there's gonna be more domains that are gonna be added. And then within those domains, more practices that, that would be added and so and so and so and so. So when you get to level, they're still working on level four and level five as of right now, but, um, it's good to at least just start educating yourself on what is involved in all this. And our biggest thing, remember, we're not gonna get overwhelmed, right? We're gonna break down the CMMC requirements into bite-sized digestible pieces, like I said, and I have access to technical folks who can help with more technical topics. I am not a technical person. I find that some, I'm from the private sector, so I find that a lot of this government jargon is very overwhelming. And even the way some of this stuff is written, um, for what the requirements are for CMMC at first glance, it looks very intimidating. But if we just stop and we say, okay, well, now what exactly does this mean? And break things down bit by bit, it's a lot easier to put some action into place and put a plan into place. And what we have to remember is that this is not, oh my goodness, we're gonna study for a test, we're gonna cram, this assessor's gonna come in and then they're gonna leave and we're gonna go, whew, thank God they're gone. No, this has to be a new culture within your organization. And society has to start taking on more of a cybersecurity 
culture in general and your organization specifically. So that's what we need to make sure we can understand it as we're going along and everyone who needs to within your organization needs to be able to understand it and digest it and not get intimidated by the language. So I'm here for you. I have the technical people that will be here for you to help and the Connecticut CMMC coalition is here to help too. So in our next episode, we are gonna talk about FCI and CUI. What in the world? We're gonna talk about FCI, which is federal contract information and the difference between that and CUI, which is controlled unclassified information. There's a great, um, po oh, I can actually show it to you here. Let me see here. Well, first uh, I wanna show you the next slide, which has some resources. Uh, here we go. So this is going to give you all the nitty gritty of what is involved with CMMC. This is a great site too, cmmcaudit.org. They have a lot of really, really good helpful tips, very good at breaking things down. And same thing with this one here. This is a very specific link that talks about level one certification and how are we going to get started to you know, work on all this. So that's what's going to happen um, for level one. And again, this is me and this is our website here. I want to show you for the um, uh, Connecticut CMMC coalition right there. I would love to connect with you on LinkedIn. So send me a connection request and uh, we can connect. And then let me see here now, I wanted to show you this. So this is our blog post. So this is our website. Oh wait, I gotta get out of here, I gotta get to the front. This is the Connecticut CMMC coalition website. And I just wanted to show you where you could find, if you wanted to get ahead and read the FCI versus the CUI difference. If we go down here to where it says education and you can check out the blog. And right here, what is CMMC? That's gonna give you an overview. Gets into a little bit more detail than what I just talked about, but it does talk about here, what is, F is FCI and what is CUI? So that is a good little um, reading there. It's not too long. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Here I am again. So I just want to say thank you very, very much for taking the time to listen to my little dissertation here on what is this whole CMMC and let you know that I'm going to be here step by step walking through and breaking down things into digestible bite sized pieces. So don't get overwhelmed. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye.